Profit isn't personal. Profit is what will please the people funding, publishing, and investing. Parties involved in the production seek whatever will secure the largest return on investment. To these parties, there is no consideration of what is meaningful or impactful to you or me. There is only what is most profitable. However, appealing to the ESG by toning down, sanitizing, and deliberately downgrading women under the assumption that consumers would just tolerate any slop was actually effective the first few times. But as George Bush Jr. so eloquently said, Fool me once. Shame on Shame on you. It fooled me, we can't get fooled again. For nearly a decade, lonely Tumblr users turned social justice warriors turned social activists managed to slither their way into people's favorite media and force their standards to lower the bar so that their kind could finally walrus shuffle over it and quote, be seen. And for a time, this was exactly what parties were willing to fund. You have to force behaviors. At BlackRock, we are forcing behaviors. If you don't achieve these levels of impact, it, your compensation could be impacted, okay? You have to force behaviors. If you don't force behaviors, whether it's gender or race, the composition of your team, you're going to be impacted. And that's not just not recruiting. It is development, as Ken said. Force. A verb in this context meaning to make someone do something against their will. Forgive me if that sounds dramatic, most people don't want to do their jobs, but they just do what they're told for the money. For the money. And that's exactly why the ESG can force its way. But as Grand Wizard Larry Fink says as he cracks his whip if he doesn't see the diverse behavior he's forcing, then you will be impacted. This is the daddy the media calls master. And to be blunt, if you don't see pretty women or jiggly tits in the things that you're consuming, it's probably because they're bending, arching that back to this plantation owner in charge. Quite frankly, the consumer doesn't care until quality suffers when it's so noticeably bad that it calls into question whose fault this is, this consistent laziness and failure. <laughs> it's kind of like when a sketchy submarine that avoided safety inspections and official classification because that would stifle innovation implodes and kills the five people in it. People wouldn't have cared if everything went smoothly, but when it implodes, this quote from OceanGate CEO Stockton Rush becomes a little more relevant. There are other sub-operators out there, but they, they typically um, have uh, gentlemen who are ex-military submariners, and they you'll see a whole bunch of 50-year-old white guys. Um, I wanted our team to be younger, to be inspirational, and I'm not going to inspire a 16-year-old to, to go pursue marine technology, but a 25-year-old can be inspirational. And so we've really tried to, to get um, very intelligent, motivated, younger individuals involved because we're doing things that are completely new. That CEO stalked and rush after having committed a bunch of people to a watery grave, implying that the new things that they are doing are not testing equipment and then dying as an immediate result of untested equipment that believe it or not contrary to popular belief that is not completely new that's that's pretty popular over safety over concern for potential loss of human life diversity is now prioritized over the skill talent and quality of work so if you're not the right race or gender or identity to tick Larry's boxes, then you're probably going to miss out on all the money he's got to waste. My name is Kyel. And if I can quickly show my face to say, nigga, it's still prejudice. Regardless of which Jewish journalist Jason is upset that the staff isn't diverse enough, 
Sometimes, the most qualified people don't fit the deceptive college brochure utopia you're pushing so hard for, but our generation does not weep when you avoid logic, ignore data, and dodge reason like you're Neo in the fucking Matrix. Consequence finding you is as natural as a woman with a womb. Liar, shill, thief, developer, ESG lover, cock, casual. Times change. Now, the pervasive, fat, flat-chested, and identity-focused depictions of deliberately ugly entities and lazy, creatively bankrupt media has even the average oil and soot-stained consumer disgusted and cautious enough to carefully assess and avoid anything telegraphing the joyless projects crafted by untalented people more interested in lecturing and diversity than in crafting anything of value or quality. But the terms diversity and inclusion have come to mean making media look like a deceptive college brochure, the ones deliberately made to trick people into believing that this is an accurate representation of students at a campus, but it is, by definition, misrepresentation. And terms like representation, as it is used in media, are effectively, actually, Weapons used by woke activists to exert control desperately in an attempt to exert control and force out specifically what they dislike. Gorgeous, jiggly-tittied women who are as confident as a man and willing to use their wiles to wrap men around their finger and get what they want. Not with brawn or, you know what I mean, but, but with wit. No can do. Femme fatale is offensive to the woke types, and they decide for everyone what is harmful. So harmful that a depiction of it, it's just not okay and it shouldn't exist. It should be removed. That's dated. To these activists, the ideal woman is actually a short-haired, flat-chested entity that is fully covered up unless they're so masculine that their build could be indistinguishable from that of a man. This helps signal the message to other who share this agenda. In America, Western media has decided women's chests must be flat and that whatever race gender or identity people decide they are that weak must be represented <laughs> how else would anyone ever be able to connect with anything that or everybody working on the production's a bigot bonus points if the character that they have is ugly and fat too because gorgeous and sexy people set a quote unrealistic standard of beauty that has a negative effect on kids it's not them it's the kids. They worried about the kids. Will somebody please think of the children? And if you play this game, you're a transphobe. And if you eat this sandwich, you're a homophobe. And if you hate this movie, you're a sexist. And if you think bitch too fat, then you are fatphobic. Okay. I accept all of the fuckboy terms that you're ass is rolling out bro weirdos out here willing to call people all kinds of names and judge people for what they like but the second we bring the furry and lolly bullshit that you're into onto the fucking screen it's like oh you're a hypocrite you know what i mean i'm i'm not willing to pay for fat and ugly censored garbage you know i could get that anywhere ai has quickly reached a point where it can effortlessly and instantly create appealing art that is leagues better than a team of the easily offended activists pretending to design. The reason AI impales and twists the blade and you're sorry you're carving your ass up just letting it fly, you know what I mean, right out, because you're so woke that you spend your life trying to change the definition of things. AI has no such struggle. It doesn't need to argue with what anyone believes beauty to be. When beauty is typed in, it produces what people agree with. The current definition, not what hive mind needs the new definition of beauty to be. These are escapes.
They're supposed to be fun. They're supposed to be appealing. They're supposed to be entertaining. These commie rat dicks who've been allowed to infest and sabotage these studios, they're just giving it up to the Eastern developers. No contest because they're willing to, at a glance, ruin the appeal and potential profit of something. Come on, man. Saints Row Reboot was was Woke Gaming's 9-11, and it's indicative of a scenario playing out in all media. Untalented freshmen who can't create anything relevant, so they have to grab a pre-existing property that they swear they can do so much better, dang. <laughs> sure. And that quote. I view this as an exercise in shedding some of the toxic fans, and we can start anew. Better and free of the shackles. And I know we really need to hammer home what Saints Row is about. As some people have it very twisted. This was before the game came out, by the way. <laughs> Tip for any production with some ignorant loudmouth on staff. Too selfish to understand or care that their words could potentially sacrifice the time and effort of people who are silently slaving on this project on an altar of foolishness. You're working overtime and spending the limited amount of hours that you have on something some out-of-touch dyed-haired deerkin can sabotage with one Twitter rant at literally the wrong one. If these types keep getting hired, they'll keep destroying. Golden eggs, too. Happened to Star Wars, happened to Marvel, it happened to Halo, twice. These people only care about themselves. It may have worked for a while, but that time is over. To the patrons, the sponsors, and the watchers, I thank you for listening and supporting. If you want to help, the links are in the description, but I appreciate everything. Recently, Rocksteady blocked me, so next I'll talk about how I guess I wasn't dark enough for the Equality Club. You know, maybe I should swap my race like they did with their character, or just take a bat to my face, because somehow I'm not ugly enough for their ugly club either. I'm not ugly enough for the ugly club. 